Hey guys and welcome for the arena tutorial for the Japanese and let's see what this ship has to offer. So it's an infantry civilization, fishing ships who don't care about it because it's arena, meal lumber, mining camps cost 50% less wood, infantry attack 25% faster starting in feudal age, the unique unit is a samurai and the unique text are the Yasama, tower shoot extra arrows and kata paruto. Tre trebuchets, fire and pack faster. Team bonus doesn't matter on arena. So as we read, as the champion, the halves and the samurais for the Japanese are great. They also get arbalest and cannoneers, and not the best siege, but they also get great monks, which is important, and great towers, which might be very useful in arena. And uh, let's see how to play them. So, I'm gonna be playing versus uh, Neely. He'll be playing as the Portuguese. And let's see what I did here. Uh, so, I had two options to consider here. One option is that he will open with Light Cap. And then I should probably open with Light Cap as well as Japanese, because I want to call it the relics. And, well, if uh, I open with monks, it might bite me in the ass later. Uh, but the second uh, question was, well, what if you will go for organ guns, which is quite possible to see on arena. And then I thought, well, then if I go scout, I'll get wrecked by the organ guns. So I decided to open with double monastery in case we'll go organ guns and pray for some man conversion luck if he goes for the light cap. Uh, so the build order for Japanese, at least for me, is a bit different. We start with six on uh, food, but the difference is we send only... 3 on wood since our well lumber camp and meal and mining camps are 50% cheaper so we don't need more than 3 builders on wood at the start 6 on food, 3 on wood, then we go for the boar and then we go for the meal uh, except that one builder, everything else is standard with the Japanese uh, so 4 on berries, getting the boar and then everything else is on board, up to 20 villagers. Let's make this up till we get the 20 villagers. Obviously we get the second board as well. Already did two houses, so there was no need to do another house. Okay, we got to 20 and then we can do a second lumber camp and start getting the deers. So we do the second lumber camp, we send two on gold. So always try to pay attention to your berries, you saw that bastard was trying to go around. Okay, two on gold, and then one more on uh, berries. Or actually on wood, did I send on wood? No, I send on berries, okay. We had one more on wood here, so we have six on wood in total. And everything else is on food and two on gold. Okay, you can also add some farms when the ship runs out. I do the farming always with injured villagers. So in case a scout get into my base, uh, he won't snipe that villager. Okay, added even one more on wood here. Market and blacksmith is the way to go if you open months. And we had two more on... Did uh, add some on wood? Yeah. Well, we will see what happens after we click up. It's the number of filters on each resource. So I think I kind of forgot here that I want to go monks. But you see, I, have, I had only two on gold. And uh, probably was busy flaming someone on my Twitch chat. Yeah. But then I realized, damn, I want to go uh, monks. Also, it was, the scout was especially bad for me, considering I was going for monks and I had no idea what he's doing. So see in the end, after uh, deciding I do want to go for the double monastery, I have 7 on gold, 5 on wood here, 5 on wood here, and the rest are on food. So we go to Castle Age. <clears throat> as soon as we get to it, we do the double monastery. But also, we don't uh, we don't go all in. The plan is to uh, go to monastery, try to fight for the relics, and boom at the back. So you see I'm already adding from center on the wood line. Doing monks from both monasteries, houses are important, obviously. And yeah. So 
also something important that you need to know when you go double monastery. Like I always do two monks, like one monk from each monastery, and then I add the same city. Because scouts versus monks, uh, if um, if it's a light level actually, you need only two kills to get a monk without density. With density you need three hits. Did I say kills? I, mean, I meant hits. And the fact that he's going for scouts, entity is crucial here. Also adding the third on center on the goal. And I'm wait waiting for entity to kick in and to add one more man before I go out because I had a feeling that he's going scout. I didn't know that. I had a feeling. Since I didn't see a castle on my face yet. So you see I'm staying at my base with two monks in case uh, in case I'll need to convert. And I try to use the monks at the back to convert whatever is coming. And this was very crucial. Since I had the sense, you see, it takes him some time to kill the monk. But with that luck, because I had the sense, I got two conversions and killed his monk, which was crucial. And then another monk already popped out, so we started converting another one. And then trying to heal the injured one with the monk that is uh, not hit. And more monks are coming in, and I keep getting the conversions. So and then I killed basically. Well, I took five scouts from him and took uh, three scouts for me, so this is just amazing. Uh, he did pick up one relic, but at this stage I felt very good with what happened already. Uh, villager numbers are the same, but I have so many monks. And it's a fight for Zara as the relic began. Also, I wanted to use a scout to try and find his monks. Uh, which I've Actually, he did a bad decision here. The, I, I used the scout that I converted to kill two of his months and another one. And that's another trick that is nice, you see. If you something like this happens to you, you put a scout under the gate and you try to convert everything else with the... Uh, with the monks, and you see the conversions were just sick in this game, and the scout still keeping the gate open, which means I can go inside with the scout, I can actually go inside and take the relic from within his base. <laughs> it was very, very lucky. Like, that's already five scouts that I converted. So, we stole the relic from within his base, we had five scouts, and we had full map control set to the monks, so the decision to go monks was great. Uh, well, when you have this kind of big fight, it's kind of hard to uh, pay attention to your economies. And you could see I was idle, that's always bad. And also I did realized, okay, I have the map control, I want to go for a forward castle. So we send builders on stone already. And we go and fight for the remaining relics. Did I see them? Losing that relic was a bit sloppy by me. I should have sent one scout. Ah, I didn't even see it. Okay, it wasn't sloppy. If you see relics, you should always leave one scout on the relic, like Neil is doing here on this spot. Probably they don't see any of them yet. That's why I was using the scouts to try and find extra relics. But that's what you should do, what Neil is doing here. If you see the relics, just in case some random man will go there. I actually missed it here, that scout. But okay, and well at home we are doing the wheelbarrow, we are booming on three town centers, adding farms. So I decided I want to go for forward castle, use the power of the monk that I have, do some Japanese traps which are amazing with the uh, kataparuto, and try to do the damage, because as Japanese you will most likely go for ranged units, right? Either organ guns or hand cannoneers or arbalest even. And cannons, which are the best thing about Portuguese, uh, will be quite bad here versus a big amount of maps. And you see, shift clicking is a bit annoying. <laughs> like, I up, oh, now it worked. He was trying to get it, but not on time. Okay, so I was now ready to go up. A lot of builders on stone, but I forgot the building. That's crucial. Never forget buildings, you see. Could have been up way earlier. We are on the way to Imperial Age. And I went to go for a forward castle, so it was a bit long stone. But I realized, okay, I want to do the forward castle anyway, and I don't need the stone, so I left the stone miners uh, to work here. And uh, I sent the villagers forward to do the castle. And always try to do the castle in strategical places, like you see this place. 
Not only that it secures that gold for me, it also takes him off this stone. And it's right on his base, so it's, I feel like that's a great castle. He did a good move, taking the relics back. He's doing the archery ranges, which I cannot see yet. Okay, but we got the castle up. I also did the fledging, so my castle will be more dangerous. We'll kill more units if needed. And we are in it doing the traps. Well, he's just only now on the way to Imperial Age. Uh, also, I'm doing the Ultimanka upgrades, block printing, where is Illumination and Theocracy, not sure. But we are doing the traps. And I decided, well, I'll keep pushing with castles. And you see, I have only 477 stone, but bam, I just bought 200 stone. Or 100, and I was waiting for more. And we do another castle on his face. Uh, he does have some crossbows, but that's not enough versus the amount of monks they have. Also, the skulls that I converting from him are really helping. And that castle basically denies like half of his food economy. So, castles are basically military in this type of games. And they are just crucial. And he didn't have the stone. Like you see, his second stone is here. His main stone, he cannot get to it. It means that he cannot get a castle. And he can only take my castle down with other uh, ramps or cannons. And since cannons get converted by my monks, uh, I was at a great position. So now even adding the Katafaruto, adding more traps, doing the chemistry. Did I get? I actually get bracers as well, so my castles will be even more dangerous. You see, they are killing everything around them. And we decided to... I'm not sure why I did the barracks here, I don't remember. But maybe I want to add ranges. Okay, Kataparuto is there. More monks are coming. Am I doing? No, actually I'm not doing any more monks. Basically doing crept and castle now. So another castle to deny him said gold. He already had a nice decent amount of arbalest. I lost some villagers here. But because my traps now pack and unpack and fire faster, like I can use them to actually fight as siege like against his arbalists. And versus the cannons, of course, you can see that he's going cannons. But they just pack and unpack so fast, and all times a monk convert the cannon if needed, so you see, I'm killing arbalists with uh, traps basically. And if some random arbalists come by, a castle kills them, and the monks are great versus the cannons. But nevertheless, I didn't go for one uh, town center. I have great economy. Great. I have decent economy at the back. And if needed, I can do other military. But I felt like traps and monks were working at this stage. Uh, obviously, I could have done uh, ranges, but I thought uh, let's stay with the monks. Assisting cannons and versus. Uh, versus cannons, if I go skirmishers, it might be dangerous. Also, you see traps are killing cannons, where my monks should have used the monks to convert them cannons. And also the traps are shooting them, his gold is getting destroyed by my castle. The traps are doing the job versus the cannons, and the monks are helping, so I ha basically had 8 traps. 8 Japanese traps. Got killed one, got two conversions, this is just... Monks, man. Power of monks. And you see, you can put them in the castle, jump to the other side, convert, put them back, jump to the other side, convert. And the traps were doing an amazing job versus the Arbalest. And again, it's so hard for him to push, because any second I stop converting, he just needs to send the Arbalest back. But then the Arbalest gets attacked by the traps, and he needs to send the cannon forward again. And meanwhile, the castle is destroying basically his economy. But it was getting dangerous, yeah, the score uh, difference is huge, but if we can kill some traps with the cannons and get the monk to the Arbol, it's still possible for him to come back here. Okay, here I lost some monks, which was bad. We got a trap. Actually got two traps, three traps. Wasn't the best fight ever for me. Look at those Katparuto traps, man, they're just insane. Okay, and here is where I decided to basically end the game, because I did have some economy, I didn't, didn't have the best farming economy, I had 22 on food, 
but because I wasn't doing any other anything else with the food, I decided to go for Elite Samurai because I saw already he was trying low on gold. He basically had no gold income. Uh, maybe he was selling stone that he was stealing here. But the Elite Samurai, yes, they are bad versus Arbolet, but along with the trap and the man, they, they should be amazing. Military numbers were quite even. But my military was just so much stronger. Half of my military was traps, basically. Okay, now the samurais are coming. He is probably yeah. He has no gold income whatsoever. The castle did the amazing job taking him all of the all, all of his resources. And yeah, from here it just was a matter of time till he calls it. Converting the last cannon, the samurai is destroying everything, traps are going for his buildings. Yeah. Should have scouted, should have outpost uh, my back base to see what's going on there. But yeah, hope you enjoy this tutorial, boys. And uh, well, uh, more will uh, be coming, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you in the next one. Bye bye.